The expressed views of the guests on this podcast are theirs alone and not necessarily endorsed by the host, TWBC, or any associated sponsor. Conversations that are robust yet balanced, on point and to the point. You are listening to The Talk of Tournament Water Skiing. This is the TWBC Podcast. And now, here's your host, Tony Lightfoot. Well, greetings one and all. My name is Tony Lightfoot. Uh, Glad to have the pleasure of your company on this uh, latest edition of the TWBC Podcast. Now... Uh, a big, uh, big announcement uh, was made uh, by the uh, the skier who I'll be interviewing uh, for this episode, and uh, with that, uh, uh, Joel Poland. Uh, what was what was the big uh, what was the big brouhaha that that you uh, that you announced over your Facebooks and socials? Uh, the big MC. I am now part of the Masscraft Boat Company. Uh, we uh, we announced that on Friday. Uh, it's been. A long road getting here, and you know I'm just like beyond stoked to be a part of this team. Excellent stuff. So congratulations uh, 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 for for that. I mean, uh, how long did it? Uh, I mean, I mean there must have been meetings and phone calls and all that kind of stuff, you know, and references and what have you, and what have you, uh, been thrown into the mix. I mean, how long did it take for the for this deal to go down? Um, you know, I'd say we've been flirting for a few years. Uh, it's been a little bit back and forth of you know I. I'd say I was kind of the first one to reach out when I was kind of a bit more of a nobody and said, you know, I'd love to be a part of this team. Um, huge fan of Freddy Krueger and Freddy Winter. So kind of reached out to those guys to begin with. And yeah, we've, we've been back and forth flirting, but I'd say it all kind of came together in the last two weeks. Um, yeah, we had a nice sit down meeting and, you know, our views aligned. Everyone seemed to be on the same page and pretty much instantly I signed a contract and here I am. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it, it it wasn't as a result of like the the latest latest two world overall records. One of them uh, just accepted, and another one appending. It was it wasn't wasn't anything that uh, that Mastercraft reached out to you for in that respect, right? I mean, I'm sure they helped. Uh, I'd say it's probably just you know the last three years, seeing the way my career has gone since I first initially reached out. I mean, you know, I wasn't a world champion or anything like that. I had no world records when I was first trying to make it happen and over the last few years i've managed to get some wins some records and yeah build a bit of a name around myself and i think you know they uh they see that i've got a bit of a future in this sport hopefully and and they're backing me all right then so uh let's discuss this a little bit uh, because i'm sure there are there are people out there that have a lot of questions uh, for you mm-hmm. in 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 res- respect to all of this and uh, and i actually prepped you for this interview with beforehand so you know no of the kind of questions that i'm going to ask you about yeah and they they seem they seem to fall in line with a lot of what uh, what our listeners are probably going to be asking so the uh, first question I mean, primarily you're an overall skier, but I mean you do jump and uh, and 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 your slaloms are uh, pretty pretty decent, along with your tricks, you know. So I mean, but the the thing that you're most known for are the world overall records, the current one, the one that just gotten accepted, and the one that is uh, that is currently pending, and it is probably the the worst kept secret in the industry that uh, that if you do. Uh, if you are in the situation where you could potentially produce a world record, that you do it behind the boat that you're contracted to ski behind, uh, do, is is that in pl- is that in place here, or, uh, or or is or is that or is that very? You know, that was probably my first question I had actually when we sat down and had our meeting. Um, what's the deal here with records? Because you know, if if I have an opportunity to win a tournament or break a record, like. I've got to be honest i'm i'm always going to take it like the competitor in me is not gonna pass up on a record they're rare moments of rare opportunities and Mastercraft were like fully on board with that they couldn't have been more cool with it and just said look we're here for you as an athlete we want to work with you you know they want to grow the sport they don't want to limit you um and yeah they were totally cool totally on board and it was like an instant hey if you get an opportunity like take it so I mean, if you broke the overall world record, like at say the Masters or at the Malibu Open, they wouldn't have any qualms about that. I'm pretty sure they'd give me a clap and a congratulations. You know, they they seem to be very cool and very much on the same page of like we're here to help you as an athlete and to become better. And yeah, I mean, we've not been in that situation yet, so we we'll see when it comes around. But by the sounds of it, they're very very cool about that kind of stuff. 
Well, excellent, because I mean, you have you you've demonstrated that uh, that behind any boat that you can uh, you can perform <laughs> up to a decent level. I mean, case in point, the the Malibu Open about a uh, two or two or three weeks ago over in Tuscaloosa, and then uh, world overall record uh, behind the Mastercraft mm-hmm. over at uh, over at Lake Gru and uh, and uh, and, uh, and an overall world record right here at Jack's uh, dating back to twenty twenty two. So you've uh, you've definitely. You're not exactly dependent upon the boat so far as producing the world overall record. No, I mean, I'll, you give me any kind of opportunity and... Put you behind a Boston Whaler. Mate, give me an opportunity and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll swing for it. Honestly, I had a few tournaments at the start of the year in Europe where I was frustrated at myself for not getting closer to that record. And then, you know, you have to go back and look and go, well, you know, it comes down to more than just a boat. Um there's just so many variables that come into breaking a record, which is why I say, you know, if there's an opportunity, I'm not laying up. I'm taking it at every opportunity possible. Um, and yeah, Mastercraft seem to be cool with that. Like, I don't think every boat company can say the same. I know in the past has been hairy moments with athletes breaking records behind other boats and bad situations, but that is not Mastercraft and... I think that's why it works between us as well, honestly. I think you were probably um, wearing, you, you might have made a little bit of a slight reference to Jacinta Carroll. I mean, when she broke the world record behind the Mastercraft, you know, at Lake Grew and the Mastercraft Pro, like about two, uh, yeah, it was actually in 2021, uh, mm-hmm. right after these world championships, you know, and uh, uh, and then the result of that was she was booted from the Nautique and, uh, and ended, up, ended up with the... Uh, uh, with skiing, skiing behind uh, Ma- Mastercraft, uh, at least so far as their uh, their Melbourne Australia dealership oh. is concerned, yeah, is that so? I didn't know. Yes, <laughs> I was totally unaware. Well, uh, I mean, it was it was it was certainly the case, you know. So, I mean, obviously, you're very wary of that. But you actually credit to you, you you made mention the uh, that possibility right from the get go in the negotiation. So, fair play to you on that mm-hmm. one. Now, so far as training. Obviously, people who know you well and, well, or even know you vaguely well, uh, know that you train over at Matt Reaney's place, which is a staunch Nautic place. Yep. And so, and I mean, I spoke to Matt Reaney just a short while ago and uh, mentioned mentioned, uh, the fact that you got on the uh, the Mastercraft deal. Uh, Typically, that comes with a boat, but... And, and I mean, he's getting. He said he gotten calls he'd, on his phone. His cell phone had been basically ring, ringing off the hook, uh, so to speak, like wondering, is, "Are we? Is there going to be a mastercraft at, at Matt Rainey's? I mean, wh- wh- how are you going to deal with that situation?" So, so basically, that's the that's the question. I mean, how how did do, how does that work? Knowing that uh, that the boat that you're uh, that you're sponsored by, that you were trained behind, you know, can't can't be put on the water at, at the at your uh, your your training uh, side of choice yeah i mean um in terms of sites like i wouldn't say matt's is the perfect training site in the world i'd say as a training site it's an amazing place and you know not no one really skis at matt's because of the conditions um i think we're all on the same page if we ski with matt because we ski with matt you know mm-hmm. um and he's always been you know, and more and more our relationships grown over the years, but he's always been so much more than a, than a coach to me. Like in a lot of ways, he's, you know, a second dad, like more importantly, he's a friend, um, a manager as well at times. And yeah, I mean, our, our relationship isn't strained in any way. He couldn't have been more happy for me. And he's on the same page of, you know, Mastercraft is definitely the brand that fits me the most, um, as a person, like I couldn't see myself being with, any other brand really is who I am. Um, I feel like I'd have to bend and break a little too much to make that work. And yeah, he he's on the same page as me. So in terms of mine and Matt's relationship, zero strain there. Um, I will be getting a boat from Marscraft, which is quite nice. And there is yeah. no chance that we're going on Matt's Lake. He made that one very clear. He said, I love you, but like, I don't, yeah, I won't go too deep into that one. But uh, <laughs> That won't be happening. Uh, however, I do have, luckily, a lot of friends in Florida, and uh, I don't live in a lake, but many of them do, so I can put it on one of my friends' lake. Um, I'll come I can to ski drive there as well a little bit. Exactly. So that's the next thing. I just got to find someone who will ski with me, which I can't see that being too, being too big of an issue in Florida. And There's always pro- somewhere around, right? And you'll probably get a chance or two to, uh, to train with, uh, with Freddy Krueger for jumping behind his boat, right? And that's what I'm probably most excited about is just an opportunity to ski and learn from freddy krueger i mean like 
the knowledge that's in that man's head like i just want to know a piece of it he's always had a lot of time for me um i'm hoping now i can get a bit more of that time even <laughs> and of course freddie winter a great friend of mine um you know we used to ski he he was my skiing partner up until i was about 14 15 when he moved to a florida he says he can't stand you <laughs> yeah he's lying he loves me he bullies me a lot and i bully him back so we've got a good english relationship i'd say get but, as good as you can get man it, like being able to ski with those two i think that's going to be uh a lot of fun a lot of opportunity to learn and uh and kind of grow as a person all right then you come into these world championships 2023 uh, mm -hmm. two seasons out of uh snagging your first world overall title uh do you feel any pressure on your shoulders? Do you feel uh, the, the level of expectation uh, 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 grab, grabbing onto you? Or are you, or are you just going to like just swagger on through as you typically do uh, most tournaments, you know, with the Hawaiian shirt and, the, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and all that going on? Um, when I look back to two years ago at the Worlds and where I was as a water skier and an athlete, um, you know, I was... I was becoming a pretty good skier, but I had I skied my socks off. You know, I had an incredible tournament. I think I PB'd in basically every event. Like, had a really, really good tournament. Um, over the last two years, I'd say I've just kind of really found my groove, solidified it. Now, you know, I look back to when I've had my worst tournaments this year, and um, the, there's something I would have been happy to have done two years ago, and now when I have my worst tournament, you know, it's not. It's not too much of a deal breaker. So there's definitely that little bit of pressure there, but at the same time, I'd say that my confidence as a skier has grown. I feel more confident in my base level ability in terms of trying to peak. Um, had a little more tournaments this year than I did two years ago. So my body's definitely gone through the strain and you know, you, you have those emotional up and mm -hmm. downs as well as the body up and downs. And I've been going through it a little bit more this year than I did two years ago, but I don't think I could be any more prepared than I am now. Sounds good. Now, uh, now, Great Britain, uh, two seasons ago at the World Championships, uh, managed to uh, to get a, a second place finish in the team overall, and uh, they come into this competition. You're part of that team, and uh, coming coming in with a, with a, with a team that is as uh, shows every indication as being one of the better ones that they've uh, they produced. What do you say to that? I mean, we've got a pretty strong team. I'm I'm certain of that. I mean, we got me and Luke as the two overall guys, and you know luke's a luke's a pretty good skier like he can hold his own he's been skiing out in uh, louisiana he goes to college out there uh, uh lafayette reigning champions go laffy uh <laughs> <laughs> big fan of those guys some some cool guys on that team yeah. um but yeah so we've got me and luke as the overall guys and then rob is actually bringing out his trick ski for us which is going to be pretty exciting because we haven't seen rob stand on a trick ski since the start of the year at moomba i'm taking he's not jumping he is not jumping we uh we put that one out there, and he gave us a very firm hell no. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I I was thinking for a second we should have put Will on the team because I saw him on some jump skis earlier this year, and yeah, I, saw I know that. he was a pretty decent tricker. But luckily on the jump scene, we got me, Luke, and uh, some decent redhead guy. I think his name's Jack. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh he's he's around. He's a pretty decent jumper. I think he's gone two thirty like three or four times this year. So I'd say yeah, our team's fairly stacked. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely happy with how we're looking, but of course... You didn't mention the ladies yet. Oh, we got some lovely girls on our team. I do love the girls on our team, but i got to say, our guys are dirty, man. we got some good guys on our team, but um, on the girls' side, we do have... Uh, I think we have Sancho Outram on, Outram on the team. He's a great uh -huh. friend of mine. Luke's sister, actually, which is kind of cool. we got a nice brother and sister out there. And then uh, we got Jen Benjamin as well, who's wicked gal and uh yeah i saw both of them ski today they look like they were doing pretty good out there yeah but, uh, I, look, I look forward to seeing them practice you know because i'm i'm getting some early reads uh, from the team that she's been really really uh, pounding the ramp uh, with some serious intent to uh, jennifer benjamin and trying to trying to put a score out there on the team because in the team competition only three out of the six scores mm -hmm. uh the top three scores go towards the team's total so uh wanting to wanting to have the overall score to be as part of those top three you know it's going to be a challenge you know but i mean uh i mean it, it says a lot for a determination oh damn straight i mean look just having having a team like that and we have like such good chemistry on our team i feel like we're all really good friends which 
you know, all, all teams definitely have that to a point, but we're all pretty good pals on that team, which makes it real nice and easy for everyone. But, uh, yeah, it's great to see, you know, the sort of level in England of where it's at and that we're actually contenders for a podium. Well, excellent stuff. So uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna let you go so you can get ready for your jump practice. But uh, once again, congratulations on the boat deal. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything you want to say uh, uh, as as we close off this episode of the TWBC podcast? MC till the day we die. Indeed, indeed. And that was Joel Poland. My name's Tony Lightfoot uh, in this edition of the TWBC podcast. So until next time, it is ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the TWBC podcast. Be sure to check out our website at waterskibroadcasting.com. Links to our presence on major social media platforms can be found there, as well as updates to our webcast and this podcast. Duplication or rebroadcasting of this broadcast without written consent of TWBC is prohibited. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to join us next time for the next edition of the TWBC podcast.